aplauso virtual to welcome Lidia Zarevalo and Alex Alfaro. Hey. <laughs> How are you guys? Very good. Thank you. Doing yes. Good. Thank you for having us. Thank Excellent. You for having us. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. But first, you know, I'd like uh, to hear a little bit more about you, how you've been doing, how this new circumstance that we're all living in has been treating you, Lydia. What, what's going on with you? Well, I've been working from home and multitasking, doing as I can. Uh, I think it's uh, this whole thing, it's, it's a blessing in disguise. It's unfortunate, obviously. But also, at least for me personally, it has allowed me to focus more on like passion projects and to really do certain things that I love doing. But sometimes, you know, I'm not a, a full-time filmmaker, for example, or a full-time artist like Alex is, for example. So uh, sometimes I have to dedicate much of my time to certain work, certain routine. But now this uh, break, I will say, um, I have been able to dedicate more time to my own projects. And so that feels like a great blessing, but obviously it's an unfortunate time. There's obviously a lot of uh, things happening around families, you know, and everything, but uh, um, I'm taking, you know, day by day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You mentioned passion project. Can you share a little bit about what that might be? Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, uh, I've loved, I've loved working on all kinds of videos. I love comedy, sketches, little things like that. Vlogging, for example, I love vlogging. So I, I'm dedicating my time a lot about doing those things. And also, I mean, I'm a Christian and uh, I like to, you know, share the gospel, you know, even preach. So all those things are to me passion projects and something that I'm doing a lot more often these, time, these days. Uh, and working on, on websites and, and graphics and all that stuff that I usually don't have the time to do. Oh, that's right. Are you actually like a, a, an ordained minister? I guess that, that would be the... Um, um, the not term? necessarily, but um, I'm part of a prayer ministry uh, that is formed of, of mostly women. Uh, and we, we are just using o online platforms to really just share the gospel. We are part of a church. Uh, but uh, I'm not really a ministry. <laughs> I just okay. love uh, just love sharing the gospel. That's all. Well, tell me something. Is there uh, is there anything in particular that you and and your peers are doing during this moment? Because you know, there's a whole issue about people congregating and and worshiping. Um, and of course, we're all being advised to keep the social distancing. That's a big no-no right now. Uh, is there anything going on online to uh, to address that that you are involved with or aware of? Yes, well, we're doing definitely every Monday. We're doing like a Facebook live and an Instagram live where we take turns. Each one of our members take turns, and we kind of like you know we preach and we we share words of hope, you know, for people. Uh, and we do one version in Spanish, which is the one that we do on Facebook, and we do another one a little bit more informal on Instagram live with my peer, uh, Mayra Garibo, and we have a conversation just about life, you know, and just, we engage people uh, to ask questions, to give comments, and, and, you know, it's a conversation, but center in faith. That's very good. Now, if anybody was interested in checking that out or joining, what would they, where would they go? Yeah, I know, absolutely. So the, the name is Casa de Oración del Espíritu Santo. So you can find us on Facebook, on Instagram, and also we have a website. So Casa de Oración del Espíritu Santo. How you guys came together and, uh, and well, just tell us about the, the, the documentary itself first, because then we're going to run a little trailer. Okay. And then we're going to talk some more about the process, okay? Absolutely, yes. So um, Alfaro, it's a film, it's a documentary short about Alex Alfaro, <laughs> who is here with us. Um, it it kind of chronicles a little bit of his journey, you know, as an as an immigrant who who came to the states at a very young age, who grew up in in Los Angeles, an, an artist, and and then how having the program of DACA impacted his life, and then how he was able to open up after a, an experience going back to Guatemala. Uh, with a special permit called Advanced Parole, and then how he decided to tell the story to the public, you know, and then that's pretty much what the film is about. Okay. Can I mention, can I mention something real quick? Sure. That I think is amazing is that Lydia's commitment to this project was so great that on her own dime, 
she was while while working on her master's degree, which is impressive in itself. She managed to follow me at every major city that I was in to shoot footage of the documentary, which to me is 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 not only amazing, but it's 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 a demonstration of her commitment to her craft, and it's a demonstration of her commitment to something that she believes in. And so I feel very fortunate to be able to collaborate with her and to have collaborated with her because, um, you know, she was she was about it. She was like, so where are you at right now? I'm in Dallas. All right, I'm hopping a plane in Dallas. Where are you at now? I'm in Chicago. I'm hopping a plane in Chicago. Where are you now? I'm in New York. I'm hopping a plane in New York. And, you know, because I know I know how difficult it was for her when she was working on her graduate studies because, you know, so many circumstances that make it very difficult for students to be able to finish a program when they don't have the assistance uh, you know, from families and there's no trust fund and, you know, things like that. Um, I, I admire that tremendously because um, she was there and, and, and she always had a smile on her face and she never once complained about the circumstances, especially the one time that we were at the Dallas theater and it was raining and pouring and, 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 you know, we had over 750 people in the audience and she's trying to get footage of it. And there's just like water everywhere you know, she's just been a trooper throughout this whole process. And I'm just very fortunate to be able to collaborate with her and call that, her a friend. That, that's wonderful. That's terrific. You know, that's true filmmaking. You yeah. know, run and gun and get the shot somehow. Hey, right. so folks know what we're talking about. Get a little taste of it. Why don't we take a look at that trailer right now? Okay. So, cool. andale maestro. The idea to do this show came to me when I was actually in Guatemala. I was, I had traveled with Advanced Parole and I was not sure if I was going to come back. And I made a promise with God. I said that if I made it back home, if I came back home, this was the story that I was going to tell. See, I was told that there was light at the end of the tunnel, but it made my travels be told to go, turn away from the only home that I know. If I asked where to, their reply, I don't know. Writer and actor Alex Alfaro joins me now. He's recently awarded the 2018 Best Solo Performance by the LA Drama Critics Circle as one man show, Wet a Documented Journey. Congratulations, and it's great to meet you, Alex. Thank Thanks you. So, the show, as I said, is about your journey. It began here as a three month old from Guatemala, right? That is correct. Before I did this show, nobody knew what my immigration status in the country was. Everyone assumed that I was born here. I was going to basically come out to my entire artistic community. Let's get started with our uh, crazy eights. Uh, one, two, 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 one, 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 Being undocumented oftentimes is an afterthought for me. I think about it Early in the morning when I wake up and I go, shit, is today the day that I'm gonna get caught up and get deported? And I think about it at night. <sighs> Thank God that today was not the day that I got caught up and I got deported. Doing the show, is, it's literally exercising of my demons. The artist in me wants full houses every night. I want the biggest venues. I want hundreds of thousands of people, even millions of possible to see this show. The human being, me, the person, Alex Alfaro, it just kind of don't want anyone to see it. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in a right to live. Family number one, and for them I'll be giving all I have to give. I know it's hard to see the answers. These politicians do us wrong. They say that we bring a disaster. But we are Latino strong, and I'm like doing a stereotype of fighters, doing a very us. Wow, that's, that's very impressive, my God, you know. How long was the production on this uh, from beginning to end? Yeah, it was about two years. <laughs> yeah. My Lord, my Lord. Yeah. Now, Alex, does that include uh, writing the original piece? 
Well, yeah, because the original the original version of Wet, A Documented Journey, was premiered at my home theater, Ensemble Studio Theater Los Angeles, in August of 2017. Um, I believe Lydia came and saw it in early September. And, and then we had a conversation about collaborating, and we began collaborating um, in at the end of that year, at the uh, around December, because um, there was a there was a huge international Latinx theater festival called Encuentro de las Americas, that was hosted by the Los Angeles Theater Center and the Latino Theater Company in downtown LA, um, and that's kind of where Lydia began getting footage and and really stepping into the process of what it was like for me uh, at the time being uh, an undocumented DACA recipient and and just kind of getting this amazing, crazy recognition that I never thought was going to happen. Uh, Then I got commissioned to do a national tour. And during the commission of the national tour, I did my I did my residency in Dallas, Texas, um, through Caramia Theater Company. Uh, shout out to uh, David Lozano and and Frida Muller, who are the artistic directors of of, um, of uh, Caramia Theater Company. Um, and then during the process of that residency, I rewrote the entire play. Oh my! Um, yeah. So so the so there's two versions of the play. There's the original version, and then there's the touring version. And Lydia was able to capture both. She was able to capture the the original version and then the touring version because, like I said, once I started touring, she was just like, "Let me know where you are." Okay. And 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 I'll meet you there. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so she was able to capture a lot of a lot of moments of of vulnerability, a lot of moments of just you know me struggling like people you know people that have never toured and people that believe that like I mean and you know because you're an actor right it's like there's the glamour side but the glamour side is just the just the frosting Mm -hmm. on the cake you know what I mean we got to do the work Mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of work that we have to do um and she was able to witness that work and she was able to witness the hardship and the loneliness that I experienced and, 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 and the fear and the uncertainty of, oh my God, what if immigration kicks down the door and they come in and they get me while I'm, I'm in the middle of a performance because I'm talking shit about Trump, you know? Um, <laughs> that, was, that, that was a real thing. That was a yeah. real thing. And, and, and she was able to capture that. And I remember like, what what one of the questions that she asked me that I'll never forget actually didn't even make it into the documentary but she was she was she was just so honest about it she was like Alex can I ask you an honest question and I was like yeah and this is when we were in Chicago she was like are you happy <laughs> and I was like uh, oh uh, my uh, oh and then I I said some smart Alec remark like well it depends what do you mean by happy Happy is an existential thought. Happy, happy is a feeling that is originated from the cell. You know, <laughs> right? Like, oh. and then it's like, I gotta go get ready for the show. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta that make some bloopers. We gotta make some bloopers out of that. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. So, Lydia, tell us a little bit about you know how did you become uh, involved? I mean, what what drew you to this project that that made you so so intent on getting it done? Yeah, no, absolutely. So I heard about it through my boss. Uh, we saw it on, a, I think it was LA Times or some kind of article that uh, they featured Alex. And then so we went to check out her, the performance at the studio, in, in Ensemble Studio. Ensemble, Ensemble studio, studio Theater. 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 Yes, yeah. yes. So that's when I saw it for the first time with a group of friends and I was like blown away. I was touched. I could identify, you know, with Alex's story. And I was just blown away. And I was like, no, nope, I need to reconnect with Alex. You know, I, I need to connect with him. I need to propose that if he will be open to filming and open to creating a documentary. Because at the time, I was just beginning to do my master's program at Chapman University. And um, I was looking for also a project to work on. And mm-hmm. I felt that that was something um, I connected with, you know, with Alex. And so that's how I ended up reaching out to him. And he was very gracious and he was very you know, um, 
uh, open to the idea and that's how we started very informally I didn't even know which direction we were going to I just knew that I, we needed to film and I needed to follow him and then little by little I started you know getting a sense of, of where the film could go so definitely I do have a lot of footage <laughs> still well, I, have, I, have, I, I want to ask you something um was there any um did it did it strike any chords with you because of the whole theme of immigration? Are are you first generation, um, or did you did you also come to the country um, as an adult? I mean, what's what's your background in, yes. in, in terms of, of uh, where you're from? What is your? Are you guys from the same country, by the way? No, no. I'm from Guatemala. I'm from El Salvador. Right. I'm so from we're neighbors. Salvador. Neighbors. I'm neighbors. Your neighbor. Pretty okay. Much. All right. Yeah. So I'm also an immigrant. Uh, I'm currently protected under DACA. <clears throat> I'm also an undocumented immigrant. I immigrated to the States when I was 13 years old. Uh, and I've been here ever since. Uh, so definitely I connect. I could connect with Alice's story because of the same, you know, we, we share a lot of uh, similar background, I will say. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and obviously, uh, I think I felt like it was important to really continue to humanize the issue of immigration because a lot of people it's so easy to say and to judge and say, oh, undocumented immigrants, you know, they just want to come here and take our, uh, you know, our jobs away and, you know, those very simple and not true statements. Uh, so I wanted to do something with immigration and actually most of the work that I've done so far in my, you know, early career as I'm struggling to make something, um, it's been based on immigration, everything, mm -hmm. because that's home to me now. But obviously, in the future, I do want to focus on different projects, different genres, and comedy, like I mentioned before. So things like that. Question. This is a, this is a, um, a filmmaker question. Um, I'm not going to ask you for exact numbers, but I mean, how did you guys finance this thing? Did you have backers? Did you... Did you go out and sell fruit in, in, in the intersections or <laughs> are you, oh, you're pointing at, okay. I'm pointing right. at Lydia. <laughs> oh my <laughs> Lord. Here on my screen, but anyway. Um, yeah, it, it was a mix of myself, I finances and also with uh, some money that I was able to acquire from the university. They gave me a budget, you know, to work. It was not a lot. But I made it, you know, I was able to maximize those resources and to really make the best of it. You know, I guess uh, one of the things of what one of the, I would say, outcomes of being an undocumented immigrant, I would say, generally speaking, is that we learn how to really um, be resourceful, you know, in anything that we do. Like, we really maximize. If we get $1, we're going to make sure that that dollar is well spent. So mm -hmm. that's how I was able to finance this film a lot of frontier airlines <laughs> spirit <laughs> airlines you know i took a spirit airlines and i in one tiny little you know baggage i was able to fit in all of my equipment you know just trying to save on those extra fees and stuff like that so that's how that's i managed to pay for this well for now were you were you, you totally guerrilla filmmaking was it just you with the camera and the boom and the thing and the uh, really now yes you, it was most of the times it was Oh, Lord. Yeah. Well, you are truly dedicated. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Much respect to you. Um, well, you know, we could talk here all night, but I do want to hit a couple of things. A question for Lydia from the audience. Um, we know she works with undocumented filmmakers and also with COVID affecting undocumented and DACA and disproportionate and Latinos. What... Um, what can people do to support undocumented filmmakers and what, what can the film festival community and others do to support undocumented filmmakers? Did you hear that question? Yes, I did. I what, did. Can, what can we do to support uh, undocumented filmmakers? Um, and, and even now during the time of COVID, what can we do just in general for the, uh, for the immigrant undocumented community? Do, are you, um, do you have any initiatives? Are you in touch? Actually, yes. Thank you for bringing that up. I don't know how I forgot about this. But anyway, I, I became part of a Undocumented Filmmakers Collective. It's a group of 
uh, undocumented filmmakers from different var uh, various states from the country. And we have gotten together to support one another. And we are right now in the discussion of whether we become a nonprofit or we become a for-profit organization. But the bottom line is that we want to continue to uh, to help and to support undocumented filmmakers. And then ultimately, you know, perhaps even making a festival that will be dedicated and catered to and for undocumented filmmakers. So that's, I'm part of that group. Uh, as of right now, I'm just a member, but um, we, we're developing many in different ideas. And then that's something that we wanna create as a platform for all people to, you know, undocumented artists and filmmakers to reach out to us and, you know, and to be part of the collective. So that's something that I'm actually working on for now. Uh, and then of course, uh, there is, a, and, and we have shared a couple of resources on our page about different grants for filmmakers and that do not require specific, you know, citizenship or, re or residency status requirements. So we have been posting uh, some of those um, uh, resources. Yeah, that's really, that's, that's, that's good stuff. Um, you know, uh, a couple of things, um, you know, you, I'm sure you're aware of this, but in the, in the grant world and you know, applying for public money, uh, if you yourself are not yet incorporated as a, as a 501c3, uh, you can work with another 501c3, you know, uh, under their umbrella, you know, they will sponsor you that way. And the other thing is, is that I, I love the idea. I think it's fabulous. I think it needs to be done. And the fate of all film festivals are kind of, you know, in the balance right now. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Um, I'm crossing my fingers because ours is scheduled in October. And who knows where we'll be by then. But I just want to put it out there that... Um, as you advance this initiative, uh, if there's any way that we can help, um, you know, um, advice or whatever, maybe even have a block uh, of film dedicated to the subject as part of the festival, you know, let's talk, let's talk, because we've got to do this together. Thank yeah. you. I, I will take you on that and I will definitely follow up on that because we have been reaching out to various festivals uh, to have a create a space, you know, for uh, undocumented narratives to be told and to be shared. So definitely I will I will take you on that and I will reach out to you. Great. All right. Well, you know, um, I could go on for another hour, but I know Alex has to do his speech. <laughs> I don't want to be accused of making him gain more weight. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to thank both of you for, for joining us uh, for this conversation because you are both exceptional people. Thank you. And, um, your contributions are great and will continue to grow. And any way that we can support you or collaborate with you, please, we're here. The door is open. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks to Intangible Productions, our co-producers of this event. And thank you all for joining us for this fascinating conversation. <laughs>